everybody, and welcome to the Equity Guru Investor Roundtable, or should I say, me llamo Roberto con cuatro amigos, because there's a little bit of Mexico involved here, <laughs> con mis cuatro amigos, Galen down there in the basement, making whiskey. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris Perry, the guru up in the far corner, drinking whiskey, and straight up is Vishal waiting to drink whiskey. Poor bastard. <laughs> All right, let's get started. We're talking about silver, silver, Canada silver cobalt, CCW on the venture exchange that rolls off the tongue, CCW. Mag silver, which oddly enough, the symbol on the Toronto exchange, take a guess, go ahead. Uh, mag. Mag, <laughs> that is correct, M-A-G. Silver Grail Resources, S-V-G, that does not roll off the tongue, but you might want to invest anyway. And then Endeavor Silver EDR on the Toronto Exchange. Uh, Mr. Galen, yep. you love ingots and having ingots to polish in your closet. I do, I do. Just call me, me Scrooge so you, McDuck. So you, so you go first. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so silver is becoming quite the trend right now, as it should have been and oh. always, always has been, but it's been covered up by J.P. Morgan, but screw those guys. All right, basically, the total global silver supply we're looking at is probably about 976 million ounces. Our uh, production is around 784, but our demand is about 896. So we're caught just somewhere between our total supply and our actual production rate. So this means silver is going to be really important over the next little while, especially considering where our economy is heading in terms of renewable energy and that kind of stuff. So I'd like to talk about a four companies. I have kind of did a grab bag from big boys to penny stocks that you go, ah, just figure mm -hmm. it out. All right. So we're going to start off with the biggest one of the bunch. It's Mag Silver. Uh, they've got uh, uh, production going on in Utah and in, also in Mexico. Um, they've got uh, in Juanacipio in Zacatecas, Mexico. They've got a 44% interest. This is their flagship. They're in a JV with a really large miner called Frenillo PLC. It's a district scale project. It's only been 5% explored, but hey, it's high grade epithermal silver and uh, they're in the midst of commissioning a 4,000 ton per day production plant or processing plant. And the mine itself is intended to have like a 19 year life. So this is yep. this is actually pretty good coming up. I um, just got to say this company makes silver. It's very popular in the silver community. We've been talking about this company for two years because it's literally the highest grade silver and it's a primary silver miner, which I think it's very important because a lot of the silver miners are obviously byproduct from gold or, or copper, whereas this mine is a primary silver miner, which is already rare and very high grade, which we haven't seen high grade like this for quite some time. Uh, so it's gotten a lot of people excited and, you know, they're not even mining that property, but we'll talk about that when we get to the stock chart, like how, how popular it is with uh, the stock traders already. Well, you can already sort of see the prices up there. But. Exactly. So the Deer Trail project they got out of uh, Paiute County, hopefully I count or pronounce that correctly, in Utah. Uh, it includes the historic Deer Trail mine. Uh, and also the surrounding Alute Ridge, or Alunite Ridge area. Um, the company has an opportunity to earn 100% ownership in that uh, project with a 2% net smelter returns royalty. The whole thing is a silver-rich carbonate replacement deposit. Uh, they've got about 20,000 meters of historic drilling results, and their phase one drilling results include 2.3 meters of one gram per ton gold not entirely impressive but feasible but and 101 grams per ton silver this is where it starts to kick in a little bit they've also got 1.9 meters of 32 or 38.2 grams per ton gold which is a little more impressive and 952 grams per ton silver but what what's next is actually pretty phenomenal 3.36 meters of 111.5 grams per ton gold and 2300 uh grams per or 2340 grams per ton silver that's pretty amazing. They're going to start, uh, or they've already started their phase two drilling in August of last year with five holes and 5,000 meters worth of drilling, and we're still waiting for those assay results. They've got another property in Mexico called Cinco de Mayo. It's about uh, 190 kilometers northwest of Chihuahua City in the Chihuahua State in Mexico. It covers 25,000 hectares, so you could say district scale. That's pretty damn big. It contains four main mineralized zones. 
Now, unfortunately, this is where the, the kicker comes in. They weren't able to renew their uh, surface access agreement uh, to keep portions of the property and there had to write it down as an impairment in 2016. So let's hope things go a little bit better on that property. But they've got one a CPO, which really yeah. seems to be the one that's gonna that's really one. kick ass in the coming years. Um, as I said, district scale, 5% explored, that one's hot. Now these guys trade at about 18 bucks a share right now. So they're a little high end, but they're late stage and they're looking for production pretty damn soon. So that's pretty cool. Next one we're gonna talk about is Endeavor Silver. Now these guys are also operating in Mexico. They've got uh, several operating projects, four in particular, uh, one in Juan Aceve in Durango State in Mexico. It's an underground mine and they've got 80% gold, 20% silver dole bar production going on, on for that. They've got a 1,200 uh, ton per day uh, processing plant in operation, and their guidance, their midpoint guidance for 2022 is 4 million ounces of uh, silver and 11 million, or sorry, 11,000 ounces of gold. Uh, the silver grade in 2021 was 370 grams per ton silver, and also, well, not so impressive, but 1.09 uh, gram per ton gold. Uh, Bolinitos is also in, or is in uh, Guanajuato State in Cali or in Mexico. It's an underground mine. Again, 80-20 uh, gold and silver, but it's concentrate production. They currently are processing approximately 1,200, but they have a higher capacity. Uh, that's tons per day. Uh, their midpoint guidance for 2022 is 500,000 ounces of silver and 22,000 ounces of gold. And their silver grade or silver gold grade was 42 grams per ton uh, silver. Not so great, but you know, whatever. And 2.02 grams per ton uh, gold, which is actually pretty good considering today's average figures. Uh, Terra, uh, Terra Nera which is lo located in Jalisco, Jalisco State in Mexico, is 60% silver, 40% gold. Uh, it's in its feasibility stage right now. It supports a high grade uh, gold and silver underground mine and it should have a 12 year life. Uh, they're figuring it's 3.3 million payable ounces of silver and 32,874 payable ounces of gold per year. But they're still waiting for their construction permit to make, that, make all this happen. On top of that, they've got exploration pro uh, projects in Reno, in Mexico, uh, and I won't get too deeply into those because they're fairly prolific. Um, it's just good to have in their back pocket. They currently trade at five bucks Canadian or 502 Canadian. They've got a market cap of 856.02 million. In uh, Q3 of 2021, they had 101.08 million in cash and cash equivalents. And also in that same quarter, they had 34.56 million in revenue. Unfortunately, still coming home with a net loss of 4.48 million, but they're doing a lot of exploration and development. So that's to be expected. Silver Grail Resources is a, one of the litter, little kids on the block, but there's some interesting factors about these guys, which are not typical for junior explorers. Uh, one is their share count. They're still at 33 million. What the fuck is that about? Yeah. <laughs> um, now, that's that's meaning to say that they're not having to do a lot of equity raises. These guys are, are very straightforward in saying that their management is getting nothing in returns of recompense. They're pouring all their money that they do have available into exploration. And they've impressed some people recently. In fact, uh, being Eric Sprott, which is a huge name within the mining community, he dumped quarter million dollars into that company in June. So they've got, or it's June 2020, I believe. Sorry, I should, I should make that qualification. They've got projects going on now in the, uh, the, the Golden Triangle of, 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 of BC, which was the subject or, or locale of the gold rush of 1860s. Um, again, it's highly prolific mineral area. They've got the Konkin Silver property, which with historic drilling has intersected 10 feet of 5.02 ounces per ton silver in 1995. You can tell by the empirical measurements that's historical drilling. Uh, also, they've got the Tonga property, which is also close to Stewart. They're floating all the way around there. Speaking of float, they've got historic float samples found in creeks running to 92 ounces per ton silver and 1.33 ounces per ton of gold. The Fiji, which is uh, bordered to the west of the Homestake Ridge Gold Silver pro Property of Fury Gold, uh, it is uh, 
sampling in 2006 returned gold values higher than 11 tons or 11 grams per ton, which is a fairly good amount. Let's hope they get the same when they drill and they just didn't find stuff sitting around on top of the ground. They've also got the clone, uh, which uh, in 1995 and 96 drilling returned 32.9 feet uh, intercepts of grading uh, 1.28 ounces per ton gold, which is, you know, you know whatever, it's open pit. Um, they've also got royalty properties which is a, a smart thing for a junior to have. Uh, the Bay Silver property, Silver Crown property, and Mount Boy property, and also three Cobalt and Copper properties. Or sorry, that's that's not Silver Grail. I apologize. I just got carried away there. Um, uh, let me just see here. Do, 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 do. They had, there we go. Um, Eric's the, the, uh, 30 or 342,000 in cash. Uh, as of September 30th, 2021, uh, they've got uh, expenses of 106,000 approximately per quarter. So they've got some runtime going right now, but they really do have to get out there and raise some equity to make some more things yep. happen. I just I like the company because it's got like a 40 year veteran who's got the confidence of Eric Sprott. So there might be something to look at there. They're currently trading at 17 cents a share. So yes, they're a penny stock uh, for a market cap of 5.63 million. If you want to take a look at their assets, maybe there's a good compromise there as far as their value. So maybe 5.63 million is not a bad value for you to get in on. What do we, what do we think about the fact that their last door results came up empty? Okay, well, that's, that's something to be talked about. Where was this? Uh, Which property? Spot. No, no, which property? <clears throat> Teuton Silver Girl come up empty at Midas Conkin. Well, there you go. That may That's be the gamble with, these, uh, with the juniors, right? Sometimes yeah. there's nothing there. No fantastico. Hey, did you have one more? Did you talk about Endeavor? I did, I did. Chris pretty well put a pin in that balloon. No, no that's I, good. That, no, that is, oh, that look, is good. I mean, look, juniors that are only drilling four holes take a lot of risk that those four holes are going to be the good ones. Uh, sometimes you need to drill in places <laughs> where you're unsure whether something's going to be there or not, just so you can figure out uh, whether areas connect. So it's not a death blow for no. four holes to come up empty, but it's not a great look. They need to get back out there and, and, and get some more drills going in places where there might actually be something precious. Um, the share price is back up to where it was just before they announced that dust hole. So th obviously there's still interest um, and it's not just sector specific, uh, but it's a, you know, you take your chances on a micro cap that every move that they make is going to either result in a, a big jump up or a big jump down. No, it's very true. Chris is actually yep. c very correct about that. Um, it's, as it's I said, hard. they really need to raise equity uh, yeah. because they really yeah. don't have a lot in the kitty. And to drill, it's pretty fucking expensive. We're looking at a million is, plus yeah, yeah. for every drill program that's actually got some coverage. So See, it's they karma. really- It's karma too. They thought they were cool because they showed a picture of their helicopter on their website. It's like, come on, fellas, really? You know, <laughs> you know, you know you're, so you got to help. These guys need to realize that people watch mining shows on Discovery Channel and know that most of these mines are, are two dudes in in a lumberjack jacket, <laughs> right. rented bulldozers, and are putting holes in the ground and hoping like hell that something comes up. Like, you know, the whole investment conference thing where everyone's got a picture of a, of a giant bulldozer on the backdrop, and we know that you haven't yet started drilling, like, it, it's, not, it's not convincing anybody of anything. Yeah. I'd much rather have a guy with a dusty cap saying, I just got off the mountainside and boy was it cold. And, and at least that guy knows what's happening on the mountain. Kind of be exciting to get out there and do it, though. Oh, do the quickie on the Endeavor, yep. and then we'll uh, roll well, around. Well, it's actually what Canada we've got uh, finishing it off is uh, Canada Silver Cobalt, oh, which is Canada another Silver, small, sorry. small one operating out of Walmart Canada. Walmart. We'll Walmart see. There Walmart. you go. Their Castle property is their flagship property. It's located uh, 85 kilometers northwest uh, of the historic Cobalt Silver Mining Camp. It has 19 claims, 34 leases, and two licenses in 2,800 hectares, or 2,815 hectares, if you want to be exact. Um, the historic production of the Castle Mine produced 292.69 <coughs> million grams of silver between 1917 and 1989, and 376 uh, and 53 pounds of cobalt between 1951 and Ooh. 1966. Oh. 
the company just recently intersected, now this is pretty crazy, 6,188.3 grams per ton silver and 74.67 grams per ton gold uh, at, equivalent, sorry, at Castle East. And they announced that on January 24th. They're still uh, expecting more results. They hope to have them by the end of qu first quarter 2022. They've also got the Beaver property in northeastern Ontario. It's near Cobalt, oddly enough. Um, it's property. one single patented 20-acre mining claim. Includes both surface and mineral rights. Uh, the, the Beaver Consolidated Mines produce 221 tons or tones, however you want to pronounce the Canadian version of that, silver from the Beaver property between 1907 and 1940. They also have the Violet property, which historically produced 897, 291,000 ounces of silver from 1919 to 1925. And it has five known veins ready for exploration. What, the company what itself. The what are the role of the beavers in the actual uh, process? They gnaw the trees, get them out of the way so they can get the drills in. Okay. Makes sense. It's an interesting relationship. It's logical. It's very bizarre how they make it happen. Uh, but they don't have a lot of money because they're paying all these beavers. Uh, they've got uh, 25000 in the in cash as of September 20. Uh, but during that same period, this I guess goes to show that they're putting money into the ground, they had $1.63 in CapEx in, involved in their exploration. Now, they did just close $3.4 million in, in private placement flow-through flow shares uh, in December 21, on December 21st last year. And they're currently trading at 20 cents per share for a market cap of 32.69. Now, Chris might say that this is probably your better choice if you're probably taking a look between uh, Silver Grail and uh, Canada Silver Cobalt. And I probably have to agree with them there. They're, they're not very smart if they're actually paying the beavers. I don't know if they realize that that's, they don't have to Beavers do got it going on, man. They got if you've ever been to uh, PDAC, you know that there are plenty of mining guys paying for beaver. Um, look, Canada Silver Cobalt works is a former client of ours. If you bought in when we told you to, you, you're up 200% on your money. So congratulations on that. Um, it was run by a guy called Frank Basser, who is as old school a, a mining guy as you could probably meet. Um, guaranteed if you meet him in a bar, you're, you're gonna be leaving the bar before he does. Um, but this company's had more names than uh, someone trying to escape their, their ex-wife. Uh, it was Canada Silver, then it was Canada Cobalt, then it was Canada Cobalt Works. Then it was Canada Silver <laughs> Cobalt Works. Uh, I feel like if 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 uh, uh, Unobtainium goes through a bit of a commodities run, they'll add that to it as well. Um, the property that they have out there in Cobalt actually is uh, pretty heavy with a whole bunch of different metals, which is why they kind of change with the with economic winds. Um, and the, the town of Cobalt, realistically, if they could get the people off it, it'd be a much more profitable place to do business because under the town is where all the metal's at. Uh, there's apparently drills going in behind the, the, the hockey uh, arena uh, last time I talked to them. So uh, it's an interesting play, but it's an old school Canadian grafting, uh, dig, raise, dig, raise kind of deal. And short of one of those silver or cobalt going for a real run as a sector, um, they're, they're generally beset by struggles of raising money or enough money to, to, to make an impact on the market. Um, that said, over a long period, companies done well. Every year it's been done better than the last over the last three. And so anyone who's put money into it has been doing okay. Um, Mag and Endeavor, these are big boy companies that just churn cash, right? They, they make money, uh, they pull stuff out of the ground, they produce. But if you look at the share charts, man, they're as uh, liquid, as volatile as the juniors. Um, especially if you're looking at MAG, man, that, that stock chart in the last few months is helter skelter. If you if you went to Six Flags and you saw a roller coaster that looked like that stock chart, you wouldn't get on it. Um, and so for the big boys to be having those sorts of volatility dramas, it tells you that the sector as a whole is, is having the same. The little guys, they'll live and die in one news release, but the big guys, it really comes down to are people buying silver, are people not buying silver? And people right now on an industrial level are buying a lot of silver. Uh, it sort of prized itself away from just being a, a, a smaller version of gold and repeating everything that gold does. 
Uh, there's a lot of silver used in solar panels. There's a lot used in renewables. And so as those industries start to really pick up steam, there's going to be increased demand for silver. Uh, also, if we end up at war with Russia, which seems like it could happen, um, it, it's uh, silver doesn't get hurt when military starts to wind up. So uh, if, if you like silver as a sector and you can deal with the, the daily freak out yep. of whether Endeavor is at $7.50 or $5, um, lock it in and just wait and see. These aren't companies that are going to run out of money anytime soon. It's a question of whether they make X dollars in revenue or Y dollars in revenue. Uh, and it's never going to be minus X. So if, if that's your, your investment strategy is to lock it down and not worry about the day to day, those two of you guys. Canon and Cobalt Works, man, you can make 20% on your money in, in a couple of days if the last uh, month is anything to go by. It's gone from 16 cents to 24 cents back down to 20. Um, you know, one good news release on a junior can uh, can be all you really need, whereas the bigger boys need about six months of good news releases. Um, Silver Grail is a $5 million company, and that's, you know, you're really looking at one of those micro caps in the $5 million range. Anything could happen. Uh, you really sort of like be scouring CEO.ca chat rooms and, and trying to find someone who met a guy in a bar and and God knows where and, and swears to God, he knows what's coming. Um, you, it hasn't been overly successful in most recent months. Anytime a, a company, a mining company has to put out a, we came up empty news release, that sits on your, your record for a good year. People are going to find that even if they're looking at a list of 30 news releases, their eye will find those words. So that's a tough one to come up against. If they can go get more drilling done or they can bring in more partners or they can sell off a property, then by all means. But if you look back into halfway through last year, their plans were to go drilling in Tonga and Fiji and, and all sorts of things. And right now, I think they really want to focus in on one place where they can get some good news. Now. So of the four, my investment strategy would be Canada Cobalt, Silver, Plutonium, Gasoline Works. Um, uh, with a little bit of uh, intro and the others, man, they're just going to do what they do. Like I, yeah. I'm not the sort of guy that, that just votes for a sector and that's it. Because if, if you've said five years ago, what can I put money into sector wise that I'm guaranteed I'm going to make money on? You said gasoline, right? Oil and gas would have been where you put your money. The richest companies in the world were oil and gas companies five years ago, not anymore. And in the last five years, we've had so many swings in so many sectors that there's not one thing that you could have just put your money in and left it and you'd have been better off than, than, uh, than keeping your daily watch. So if I'm going for the dailies, if I'm looking for opportunities, I think CCW out of those four. Uh, Michelle, chart activity. And yeah, for sure. Um, where just, we're going. Yeah, I just want to, like Chris mentioned, uh, you know, the volatility. And I think that's actually really important to mention because uh, uh, there's a whole thing called, you know, Wall Street bets silver now, and uh, a lot of the people there are surprised at how volatile silver is. Like silver, you know, I, I would say it's not exactly like the crypto, but it's a very volatile metal, especially the, the futures uh, or the CFDs, if you trade that. Um, if gold moves up 2% in a day, silver will be up maybe 4%, right? But the other, the other case also, right? So if gold's down 2%, silver could be down 4%. So it is... A very volatile metal, and uh, it's it's not for everyone, right? To trade the uh, the, the, the CFDs or the futures, um, and you will see uh, obviously a lot of silver juniors and miners uh, get impacted uh, with that volatility. Um, you know, we've been, or I guess Galen and I are pretty big uh, silver bulls because we sort of approach it with a two prong attack. There is that industrial metal aspect. Uh, and then there's also that monetary metal aspect. And I still like that monetary metal aspect just because if you correlate silver with, say, gold, which is obviously the monetary metal, and then you correlate silver with, say, copper, which is the industrial base metal, uh, silver tends to correlate much, you know, 90-something percent correlation with the, the precious metal. So it still acts as a, as a monetary metal, even though today its primarily purpose is, is very industrial. Um, and a lot of people like to look at silver as sort of that cheap man's uh, gold, right? Uh, 
right? As, as a safe haven uh, asset or, or a hard asset. Um, there's a lot of people who consider silver is probably the most underpriced uh, commodity in the world right now. Uh, we'll see in a, in a few years time, you know, a lot of people are mentioning $50 targets on silver uh, in the long term. Um, let's see if that happens. You know, I, I hope that happens, <laughs> but uh, I, I do like it as a hard asset, as a commodity. I think it is technically still uh, overpriced, uh, sorry, underpriced. Um, chart wise, we've been mentioning this chart many times. Uh, huge support zone that silver has been holding since September 2020. Uh, we've tested it once, twice, uh, three times. I would say that's a third time with that large wick, four, five. And then just recently, uh, this this month, actually, on the 7th of January, we tested the support uh, a sixth time. And from here, we created, a, a, I would say, sort of a double bottom pattern. It's not maybe the, the most textbook looking, but there was that breakout here. And uh, that got me excited. You know, I'm excited. I think this is a new uptrend with that breakout. Uh, but if silver closes back below this 2330 zone, uh, I would say the danger of that is if the U.S. dollar increases by a, a giant amount due to what the Fed says on Wednesday, that could maybe put a, uh, you know, I could maybe dampen the gains in gold and silver. So that's the fundamental, the dangerous fundamental event that's coming up here. But technically, you know, there's a nice breakout here on silver. It's gotten a lot of people excited. Uh, last week when everything was selling off, there was one day where it was only silver that was acting like the true safe haven asset. But then after that, you know, gold joined in the day after and all the other commodities uh, joined in, uh, you know, that day after as well. Uh, but silver has been quite strong. Uh, today, you can see, obviously, there was a big red down day with everything selling off, uh, but a, a decent bit. And I would say a pretty decent bid close to the retest of our 2330 zone. So it is still still exciting. But as I mentioned, we do have that big dollar moving event on Wednesday, which could uh, uh, you know hurt not just silver and gold, but I think a lot of the commodities which are generally uh, priced in US dollars. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, so uptrend in silver, it's looking good, but it is a volatile metal. It has a lot of people excited. And I will show you SIL, which is the global silver miner um, index and there's also a junior one but a lot of the charts are going to look very similar to to sil here with uh, you know major support being tested here and we did get a bit up uh today if we do break that support you know there is uh, quite some ways to go uh hopefully that doesn't happen with a fall in, in silver but uh you know a supportive zone here so if you are bullish on silver especially with that technical chart i showed you uh, this is a very, you know, attractive area to pick up some silver companies. Um, let's take a look at a few of these companies here that we talked about. Silver Grail, let's start with them just because I don't really have much to say on this company where the chop chart is just a bit too choppy for me. Um, not, you know, thinly traded compared to everything else, but, you know, I guess technically you could be drawing some sort of flag here. And, it, you know, there is some moves here up and down without much volume that you sort of got to be worried about. But, you know, as Chris said, one good headline can send this thing thing going um, and get the volume in there. And uh, I'm sort of interested because as uh, Galen mentioned, um, uh, Eric Sprott is behind, uh, is behind this as well. So obviously he does his uh, due diligence. Uh, Canada Silver Cobalt here um, looks really good. I, I have to be honest, you know, uh, these are the type of charts I like to trade. I, I really love these type of reversal patterns after a long downtrend. You know, we, we saw one actually here back in July of 2019 where we had a long downtrend and, uh, you know, sort of a head and shoulder type pattern here. Um, we have something very similar to that here in 2022. Uh, well, it's been basing since fall of 2021. And uh, just recently we got that breakout on the 20th of January. Um, I think it's obviously to do with a lot of the silver plays moving out. And um, we've got now pulled back to retest uh, the breakout zone. And we did see some buyers here. So this is actually one that, you know, our viewers could actually act on immediately very soon. Uh, because by the time this comes out, uh, we might be making new recent highs. We might be breaking out above these recent highs. And uh, you have a new uptrend then going with uh, Canada Silver Cobalt. Uh, hopefully we don't get that breakdown. If we get a close below this 20 cent zone, uh, which you know probably would coincide with silver not holding its uh, breakout zone, uh, then we would say that this is a fake out. But Canada Silver Cobalt is looking like a breakout, looking prime for a new uptrend. So I think this is probably the best looking chart um, out of the bunch. Um, and then, you know, Endeavor and Meg are going to look very similar to the SIL chart where we are now testing 
major, major support levels here. Um, so, you know, this is going to be the fourth time in, uh, since October of 2021. Uh, last time, you know, we've seen a bit of a, a bullish move from the support, but we haven't really taken it <coughs> off, which is a bit uh, worrying uh, to see here. So we did see some nice buying today on that retest. Now we just got to see if the buyers can carry this rally and hopefully get back above this $5.80 zone. I think that's what really gets uh, the stock going. As, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the last times we tested this area, we, we bounced a bit, but we just couldn't take off and, and sustain that momentum. And the same uh, can be said here with, with Meg Silver as well, if I draw uh, that support zone. But this one, you know, it's, it's a bit of a broader zone. As Chris mentioned, you know, this stock looks like a roller coaster. Uh, you can draw a huge box or a range here and you know, you have price moving from 18 bucks up to $29 here. Uh, so we are at the bottom part of the range, uh, just like SIL and just like Endeavor. And we just have to see if this is where uh, people will jump in to buy at the support. And a lot of this depends on that silver chart. If silver can keep this upward momentum going, or if we break below this 2330 zone, it means all these silver chart plays that we looked at uh, don't sustain that momentum at support and break down, uh, which wouldn't be fun for people like me and probably Galen to have big positions in, in the silver market. <laughs> by, by the way, you did say five times in the first three and a half minutes, a lot of people are excited, which yep. I believe is Trumpian for you're excited. No, silver silver has been five trending times. on that. A on lot of Twitter. people are excited, <laughs> which means you're excited. Well, I mean, a lot of people might be excited, but a lot of times. Uh, and then circling back to Galen, you said 197 million ounces of, of silver off the top. Do you know what that is in centigrams? Not in centigrams, no. You've got me on that one. For our British viewers, do you know what that is in stones? <laughs> Sorry, the conversion, uh, yeah. in my, the conversion mechanism in my head is broke. <laughs> we're, lo we're losing the Brits. All right, let's spend some money. Uh, Galen, you go first, 7,500 bucks. You gonna go anywhere here? Um, well, I probably, probably Endeavor. I think I'd probably throw about 1,500 against them. Um, you know what, just cause it's shits and giggles and it ain't my money. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna be throwing probably another 1,500 against uh, Silver Grail. I honestly think that the, this was a, a shit sort of day in, in, in a career. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see more of that because the property seems a lot more prolific than what's just sort of made itself, uh, you know, um, apparent in this last drill program, or at least this last drill result. So I, oh. I think I'm going to throw 15 because I honestly think at this point in time, it's value for what it actually has. It's pretty well sitting at the basement anyway. Right. Um, it could disappear, so I might as well be ready to kiss that 1500 goodbye. But uh, I'm willing to throw that down as a gamble and just see where it heads. Um, I'd also like to put another 1500 against uh, the Canada Cobalt Silver. Uh, because I think it's actually got some interesting properties and probably has a lot of prospects. Uh, MAG, as Chris said, it's, it's not that it isn't going anywhere, but it's got too much of a, of a volatility for me to jump right in, uh, meaning that going between 29 and 18, that's, yeah. that's, that's a lot of difference. If it were ranging between, let's say, 29 and 25, I, that's I, no problem. I get in there. Right. But this time, it's, it's you know, I ain't, I ain't that big. Goes, right, that, so goes that kind of route, it'll screw me. 4,500 bones on the sector today. Yep. But you have to treat it very seriously because if you lose that money, you have to pay me back. Uh, Chris? <laughs> oh, shit. In that case, nothing on anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, you know, I, I, I think putting money on, on, um, on SIL uh, where it is is like split mates at blackjack, you know. It's, it's not the smartest move. But it's also not the dumbest. Like, you, you know, if, you, if you're in for the gamble, if you're in for the win, then sure, I'd put 500 down on SIL. I'd probably put a, a grand, maybe 1500 on CC Dub because it seems to be uh, getting some love. Um, the other two are index funds, more or less. You know, I, I, they're, they're almost ETFs. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means that I, it, uh, unless I'm looking at a, a six month layaway, and expect that you know the price is going to go like this for a long time, but eventually will trend upwards. Then I might throw something on those two. But I, at this point in time, 
too much volatility. And uh, it's strange to think that one of the micro caps is not the one that's showing too much volatility, but that's what's the case with CCW. Um, one small clarification, by the way, Silver Grail Resources, you mentioned, referred to as SIL, which is SVG on the venture. SVG. SVG on the venture. Silver Grail. Oh, sorry. Yeah, not SIL. My oh, bad. Sorry. I was looking at Silver Crest Metals for a second. Sorry. You're still abbreviating it, <coughs> which is fine. Silver Grail, SF, uh, SVG on the venture. Uh, Vitor, what are you doing there? What was your total there, Chris? You only, what would you spend? Like two grand. Two grand. Two grand. Two grand. Yeah. All right. Shell? So... I, I have a, a more positive outlook for silver. I think in oh, six shocker. months. Oh, <laughs> shocker. You know, I think hey, in six Shell, months to a year time frame, I think the silver prices will be higher from uh, where they are right now. And I think uh, the silver miners uh, and the, the large caps, mid caps, they'll all be performing well. Uh, I'm putting 3K in Endeavor and 3K in Meg. Uh, I think, you know, Meg, obviously, it's, it is quite, it's price quite pricely right now, very, you know, for, for something that's not producing right now, it's just because that mine is, you know, it has such a high grade of silver and it's very exciting because we haven't seen a project like that uh, for decades for primary silver miners. So it does have a lot of people uh, excited. excited? It does go online, sorry? They're very, are there a lot of people excited? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are, there are, take my word there, there are people excited. So, you know, 3K and Meg, 3K in Endeavor, uh, just because they are one of the producers there. Uh, and then I really like the chart here set up on Canada Silver Cobalt. You know, interestingly, uh, Chris, you mentioned they just keep changing their, their names when there's a metal. You know, Cobalt obviously is very popular too because of the whole idea of not sourcing it from child slave laborers in Africa. Uh, maybe in North America uh, is going to be looking at Cobalt for electric cars. So that's a little added bonus, but, you know, I'm here for the silver. Uh, I'm going to put the remaining 1500 here in Canada Silver Cobalt right at this uh, retest of the breakout. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. 7,500, baby. <laughs> all right. Good for you. So should we let people know that the reason you're so excited and all this other good stuff when we talk about silver is you, if you made a shitload of money over the years on silver, is this part of the message that we should be passing along? I, I'm, I'm a bullion. I collect bullion. Uh, you know, I, I know Galen does as well, uh, but yeah, I, I really like the silver stuff. I'll show you guys my collection maybe one day. I have a really nice uh, coin collection, but it's all silver ounces. It, from it's right behind him. Coin. It's got a sheet over it. You think that's a bed behind him? That's his bullion. <laughs> <laughs> I wish not. Is that, is that your? If it was that, that big, your... I'd be burying it outside somewhere. I love gold. <laughs> is, is that your line at the conferences? Hey, let me come on back, and I'll show you my bullion. I'll show you my bar. <laughs> you know, you know. Interesting, it was because we were actually mentioning that to some of the silver companies. We'll, like, we'll come down to you guys' office, and I'll bring my little suitcase, and you guys can nerd sure. out on silver because you guys know the silver guys there. They're really passionate. They're just like the crypto guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you have it, peoples. It is uh, silver. We've been talking about MAG silver, which oddly enough is MAG, M-A-G on the Toronto Exchange. The Canada Silver Cobalt, which is, as Chris referred to, has changed names four, five, six times. It's CCW that is on the venture. Silver Grail Resources, SVG on the venture. And EBR on the Toronto Exchange is Endeavor Silver. If you endeavor to invest, make sure you do your own research, do your own homework and all that good stuff because we can't guarantee a damn thing. Even though these guys are smart, we still can't guarantee anything. Uh, you have to do your own homework. Please do your own research. Past performance does not guarantee future results. What I can guarantee you is we'll see you on the next Equity Guru Investor Roundtable.